So for two years that we've been sailing, we've been using basically a bucket to poop. Uh, the fancy word is a composting head, but let's face it guys, it's just a fancy bucket. And in our case, it's a Home Depot bucket that we refitted to fit our head. And when we needed to get it out, all we had to do was lift it up, well, and it removes. <laughs> Awesome. This is our new toilet, our porcelain throne. It's uh, it's pretty fancy, but I'll get to that later. As we mentioned in the last video, we're getting rid of our old composting head. You probably want to know why, and it's not that it didn't work. It's just, it was a little too hands-on. The difference between our $1 bucket and a composting head like this one, which costs $1,000, is that this one has like a little rotating handle that kind of stirs everything up, which means you can dump it every maybe three to four weeks. Ours not so much. We just had to keep adding more peat moss or sawdust over top of it, which meant we were dumping it maybe every week, every four to five days. Yeah, that was a lot of uh, carrying buckets in and out of the cockpit. It did work well. There was never any bad smells. There was never any flies. It was really simple. The plumbing was really simple. It cost us almost nothing and it just worked. But now that we're back in the US and Dometic sent us this awesome shiny toilet, it's a, it's a macerating head, so it's push button. It's gonna be really, really simple. But the biggest complaint with standard flushing head is the smell. They usually have sort of a lingering smell and it's usually not so pleasant. But what we found out is that it's actually not necessarily the toilet. It's usually the plumbing that connects it to the holding tank and the plumbing that takes it overboard. So, as you may have guessed, we're coming up with our own solution. It's a little bit different, but it should still cover the necessity of a holding tank or the legality of a holding tank. And hopefully it won't smell as bad as typical flushing heads on most of the boats we've visited. If you wanna know more about composting heads and how they work, we'll put a link in the description below to a little handbook, a little PDF called Humanure, and it goes through all of the details about setting up a composting head, how they work, why they work, and uh, if you're interested, you should probably give that a read. It's free, the link's in the description, and it'll answer a lot more of your detailed questions than I can answer here. So as you saw, one of the giant boxes we received while we were gone and then opened is our new head. It's pretty fancy. It even has a lid that you can't slam. In the back of it are all of the fancy bits and pieces that make it flush when you push a button. I'll probably get into more details about that once we actually install it and I figure out how it all works. I can probably explain that to you guys later. And seeing as how it's so shiny and white and pretty, we could just install it in the same place as our old head was sitting and leave the rest of the head as is. But if you guys know anything about us, that just won't cut it. So first things first, we've got to tear everything out of our head all the way to the fiberglass so we can start from fresh and build something up that works for us and is a little more our style. <laughs> Looks like this is going to work pretty well. Check it out. No idea how they built this thing. It seems like it's impossible to take it back apart again without cutting it. Aha. That's why they got screws behind the freaking laminate. That's ridiculous. They screwed it all together and then they glued the laminate over top of it. Definitely not designed to come apart.
<laughs> Hopefully it fits. You might have to cut it. Well, that is the last big piece out of the head. And that's our that's our old head, isn't it? That's most of it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> This space is it's not much left. I think we're gonna leave this because I just put something there back anyway. So clean up these wires. We gotta take the paint off of back here because I need to reinforce around here and kind of build this knee down a little bit farther because our hall is kind of dimpled in there. But uh, but yeah, glass this bulkhead. On this side, I did the other side when I did the nook a couple years ago, but i got to put fiberglass on this side now. Yeah, then we can start the fun stuff, putting it all back together. And then we're going to go get some stuff to replace all this ugliness with, right? Yep. We're going to go to Home Depot, probably. <laughs> That's where we buy all of our marine grade stuff, is at Home Depot. <laughs> We're going to be sticking tile on this Formica and so I need to scuff up the surface with a sander so that it has something to stick to. And uh, best way i found to make sure I don't miss a spot is to use a sharpie and just kind of like scribble all over it and then sand all the sharpie back off again. It's a slow process. is just gonna be one of those days. Uh, time to grind some fiberglass on the inside of the boat, which means suiting up and sealing holes and we haven't done this in a while. Oh, it has booties though, look at that. What? <laughs> Sexy. Oh, weather sealed? Well, yesterday I finished grinding all the fiberglass in the head uh, and it's all ready to be cleaned and glassed back over. But today's Sunday, so we're gonna take a break. Over the last couple of years sailing through the Caribbean, we have gotten some very interesting aerial shots. 
And a lot of you guys may wonder how we get them since we don't have a drone of our own yet. Uh, it usually involves like a case of beer and a neighbor who has a drone. But today <laughs> we're gonna get our aerial footage a different way. <laughs> yeah. We're gonna go get some aerial shots on an airplane. Ever been in an airplane before? <laughs> no, I mean yes. Again, the same as thing. <laughs> I've been in a big plane, just not as small as this one. By the way, this is our friends Pat and Michelle. Hi. The other there. side. They're taking us for a ride today. What kind of plane is it? A Cessna 172. Cessna 172 is the most popular airplane in the world. Um, it's, it's, it's just the, it's just the Toyota Corolla of airplanes. Start, they started building them in 1956, and they're still in production. They've built over 40,000 of them. Wow. Aeroplane engines are, are, are like tractors. This, this thing is 300 cubic inch. Which is a huge engine. Yeah, yeah. Producing you know torque, right? Producing 145 horsepower. Nice. Maximum RPM is 2,500 RPM. Nice. So that's why they last so long. Yeah, because, they're, because they, they're slow. They're not being overworked. And, um, and also they're super well maintained. Good thing you're tiny. <laughs> yeah. you we we choose our friends well. <laughs> Some big dudes. I think the last time I was in a Cessna, I was like 12 years old. You were in a Cessna before? Yeah, I went over Philadelphia in a Cessna. It was fun. West, a rolling two eight right to point eight. So bring it on, no black and white and night. Clear prop. Clear prop. Zero to Yankee Roger, rolling 2-8 left, taxi via Lima. Four zero two Yankee, left downwind departure, runway 2-8 left, clear for takeoff. Left downwind departure, 2-8 left, clear for takeoff, for zero to Yankee. See the banner tail? Yeah, I'm trying to get him in slow motion, but <laughs> Good luck. it's a hard thing to get. Yeah, there it is. Come on, buddy. And there's Come a glare. This is so awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Florida looks we'll, flat from up here. We'll be climbing to our cruise altitude of seven, eight hundred feet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How does it feel to be flying, Dan? Uh, it feels pretty good. I haven't been up in a Cessna in like 15 years. That's awesome. I haven't been in a Cessna in 28 years. <laughs> <laughs> It feels so weird to fly so low. Yeah, yeah. it's cool though. Hey, you can, yeah, it almost feels like we're landing all the time. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Usually when we go to Bahamas, we'll we'll fly this low just until here because there's different restrictions on airspace. Then we'll climb up to about five and a half thousand feet, somewhere around about there, uh, is what we'll cruise at. Which is still, you know, airline-wise, it's way low, but um, yeah. But it's still gorgeous. You know, the yeah. blue, the yeah. color of the water, and just. Yeah, we're, the flight we're, is the best part. It's getting a bit hot over the land here, that's why we're getting a little bit of turbulence, but 
you know, people people worry about about air pockets because they can't see them. You drive in a road on a road and it's bumpy. You yeah, don't yeah. worry about you, you go in a boat and it's bumpy surf. You don't really worry about it either. You know. This got to be the best drone footage that we'll Isn't ever have. Cool? <laughs> so pretty, right? It's amazing. Come on, it doesn't have reverse? Yeah. No, uh, we gotta push it back. You are the reverse. <laughs> push it back, two links. Woo! That was so much fun. It's crazy how light it seems. That Thank was you, fun. Pat. <laughs> Thank you, Michelle. Bye. Until next time. Yeah. Well, thanks for the sweet cool. drone footage. Oh, yeah. Well, we'll, we'll be at work tomorrow. All right. <laughs> we'll see you guys tomorrow then. All right. Bye. Uh, thanks. Bye. I told you our boss is coming. Well, guys, that was a fun day flying out and getting some drone footage. <laughs> some drone footage. <laughs> right. Um, yeah, that was cool to see Miami uh, in such a short amount of time. Yeah. It took us six hours to sail up here and it took us. 15 minutes to fly back but i hope you guys enjoyed this step and now we're gonna go back into our head renovation mode uh what are we doing next going to home depot i guess going to home depot get the parts finish the design of our mm -hmm. master bathroom and install hopefully the head so come back next week for that until then cheers cheers so guys this is yankee <laughs> it's Pat and Michelle's boat. <laughs> I mean, airplane. <laughs>